In the opinion of the Peabody Board, this program was perhaps the best film produced in any medium in 1992. Taxpayers are putting out $100 million a year to maintain our libraries across the seas to get out the American message. Is it right that those libraries should be stocked with books by communists? Well, we have a list of those books and those authors. And that is what G. David Shine and Roy Cohn are crusading against. Anybody got a problem with that? What's your jurisdiction? Our jurisdiction? What's your name? Huh? The whole damn government, that's our jurisdiction. And don't you forget it, pal. Here to accept for Citizen Cone are Doro Bachrock, producer, and Mr. James Woods. Thank you very much. When we were assembling our cast for this film, a number of actors who lived through the McCarthy era came in and said to us, I can't believe they're letting you make this film. Forty years ago, making this film would have ended our careers. This film got made because Michael Fuchs, Bob Cooper, and Richard Walzer at HBO felt it was important to tell this cautionary tale. It got made because James Woods had the courage to embrace this infamous American villain. And most of all, it got made because this story from a book by Nicholas von Hoffman and a fine screenplay by David Franzoni was put in the hands of a man of fierce vision, the film's director, Frank Pearson, Mark Rosenberg, Paula Weinstein, Linda Gottlieb, and I thank you all. The one Dora left out most of all is herself. As we were sitting at the table, she said, you know, I always want to make projects where you wake up every morning and your eyes are red. You're so anxious to go to work. And Earlier, the gentleman who received for WGBH uh, about the, the documentary about making computers reminded me of a story that is famous about John Scully, who was at one time the president of PepsiCo International. And corporate headhunters were after him all the time, and finally he put the word out that he didn't want to meet anyone else. He was happy where he was. And Steve Jobs called up and passed on a message that he would like to meet with him. He would talk to him for 15 seconds, and he would only ask one question. Intrigued, Scully invited him into his office, and allegedly, Steve Jobs walked in, looked him in the eye, and said, do you want to sell colored sugar water the rest of your life, or do you want to change the world? <laughs> I think people like Dora Bachrock and all of the people in this room, unlike many of the people in our industry who are so busy selling colored sugar water to the millions who turn on their televisions, who go to movies, and who listen to radio, I'm proud to be a part of people like Dora Bachrock and like the people in this room who've received these awards and who have granted these awards because you indeed all are changing the world. <laughs>